Hello. Today we're going to be looking at fitting a power spark type ignition, an SVDA distributor, which has a coil, and that is going to replace a Hall effect type distributor. with its distinctive two spigots, one there and one there. And before we can start doing anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to put the timing mark on and I'm going to show you how to do these. The timing mark on the fan belt pulley of the turbine is this very small notch that's on the rear. It's not very easy to find. I don't know why they put it so small and at the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a large one here. Now if you have a look, I've got the finger on the distributor pointing this way in effect, if you like, it lines up here. And that's all we're going to do for the moment. And if that lines up there, and there's a big notch here, right? I've drawn around it so you can see it. If that notch is pointing that way to line up, If that notch lines up with that screw more or less, see the one I just painted there in red, there's a little blib on the case. Then where there's another little blib on the case, here, that lines up with roughly where you'll find the notch. And you'll find it, there's a notch cut in there and so on. Right, then what you do is you mark that there. That's your timing mark, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the crank back until this mark comes round to here. And I'll show you how to put these marks in in a minute. Right, so we've now turned the crank back. Now, what we need to know is what these marks are. Okay? Now, on VWs, on all of these, they've got a plastic um, degree scale, but unfortunately a lot of these have been lost and they don't think they're really available as a spare part because they're rather expensive. Right, okay, so what we do is, going from the center here, To the naught is 65 millimeters 65 millimeters right to the eight by coincidence is 80 millimeters and at 110 you've got 24 degrees you just do that with a straight ruler so now you've got that marked that marked, that marked, and that marked. On the old SVDA system, with its back feed and all the rest of it, it would be timed to idle at after top dead center. All the Hall effect system with the dampers and so on have been taken off, so we're going to be running instead at Eight degrees of advance. That nice slow tick over. Anyway, I'll be showing you all that later. 
So what we've done then is we've let, we've, we have now got this marked, that marked, that marked, and that marked. And the finger is still pointing in the number one direction. Okay. Now then, the next thing will be to remove the distributor. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we take the precaution of marking the plug leads. One, four, three, two. It goes around that way. One, four, three, two. You can label the plugs while you're at it. Right. And then there is a nut here to undo. 13 millimeter. You get it with an ordinary little spanner. And it... When it's nice and clean, it spins off, otherwise you struggle. right? And this will have uh, an electrical earth tag underneath it, which is the one that connected to this one, the brown ignition wire, the one that often breaks and then you just doesn't go anymore. This is the tatiel wiring loom. Uh, that's the feed to the coils. Uh, that's the feed to the distributor. And then going off this way is the awful amplifier and the over effect and all the rest of it anyway getting, getting rid of all that right you've now undone the nut there you've taken off electrical tags and so on right sometimes these can be a little bit difficult to get out so if you've got a screwdriver carefully put look there and another one carefully put there, then with a gentle lever it'll go pop and pop out. Normally they lift out dead easy. If it's really, really struggling, then I would be surprised. Okay, and we'll pause there. Okay, so here we are with the old distributor off the motor and on the bench. And as you can see, it's all rust. This is a little felt pad that's supposed to be oiled. That hasn't been touched in a thousand years. Uh, rotor arm. You can actually see it burn out. Amazing how these things run. Anyway, we're going to be getting rid of all this stuff. Now, there are one or two bits to recover. The most important being this plate. The one that I'm twiddling around there now held in place by a 10 millimeter nut. Now, depending on how this thing has been butchered in the past, um, you can undo this and slide it off. Live demonstration. Right. And then I take my Super duper expanding pliers. Get them around the right way. Look, I can do this with one hand, man. There we go. <laughs> that makes life so much easier. Right, we're going to take the clamp. Now we're going to look at this washer. See the washer on this is a big flat washer. And what it looks like is this. This is a D washer. In other words, it's flat on the inside and it's curved on the outside. You find this in an engine rebuild kit. Now, unfortunately, as is usually the case with the um, electronic uh, knockoff ones, um, they've got just a O-ring thing. So it's not terrific. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the procedure next of how we transfer how we transfer this one onto that one. Okay. Okay. So now Cleaned up the distributor clamp, 
nice and flat. And then what we do is we take off the rubber washer, the little oil seal that comes with the um, distributor, i.e. this round one. Take that off. And then that just drops down nicely onto there. And then we're going to put the oil seal in. Now I prefer to use, like comes in an engine kit, a D type oil seal. It does stop that little bit of leak. So soak it first in oil for a little while and then plonk that on. You have to twist it over, it sort of goes down and then you drop it round and get it curved side outwards in the thing. Okay, I'll show you how we do that now. Right, so that's the rubber washer on. Now I'm going to give you a handy hint, as it were, for setting up the static timing because there's no points or anything on this it's not terribly obvious but if you just basically copy the way that I've got mine set up in other words if you look here you've got clip one there and you've got clip two there if you think of that as being a straight line going across and you've got all your canister off to the right look how the locking bar of the distributor clamp lines up Just about perpendicular. If you set it up like that in the first place, then you're not going to be too far out when we come to setting it up to go on the 2 litre CU engine. Okay. Right, while we're preparing the thing up, a little felt pad in here. You take that out, put two drops of machine oil in, put the felt pad back, another two drops of machine oil in. Not to go in that kind of like a rusty lump of wood and the other one. Okay, that's about it for the preparing. Now I'm going to show you how to mount it in position. Okay, so now we've got the timing clamp tightened. We've got the washer on and oiled. And we've got the, you can see the driver's offset going to the left because it has to line up with that one. And you can see that if the rotor arm was on, it would be pointing pretty much to number one. Right, all you do is you drop it down nicely. Onto the screw. just about right then you get stuck by the washer right now I'll show you how to do that just a minute right once it's in position use a wooden dowel you do one you do it that side and then that side and just give it a tap in with a nice soft mallet that's my big soft mallet I can't do this with one hand obviously and you just get it started don't worry about trying to drive it all the way down just get it started okay And that's the distributor driven down onto its stud. And as you can see, number one finger is pointing to number one. And here we are with our timing marks. Whoops, sorry. So it's in. And as you can see, it'll move one way, but not the other. See? Right, that's it. I'm going to go and have my lunch now. Right, so here is the distributor now dropped in place. And it sits right down there. And the plate is nice and flat. And this is where you're going to put the washer on the 13mm nut. And as you will see, it moves one way a bit. And the other way, not at all. Okay. We're eventually going to be connecting up 
the vacuum pipe to the left hand carburetor and it has two leads black one red one red one is live black one is neutral if you like plus minus if you want to use those terms right and this plus side is going to go to the plus side on the coil right we'll look at that in a minute and the minus one is going to go to the minus side on the coil I'll show you that and then we're going to put the uh, put one thing down pick another thing up and then we're going to pick, put the distributor cap on and what we've done just to make life easy is that it's already marked with number one plug and a little blib down the bottom and a little blib down there and so on it would only go on one way around so once you've got it right then that's it forever and ever okay well i'll set these bits up and then show you okay so and that is on tightened down not too much just correctly these line up that's your number one this is number one and it goes one four three two one four three two but you've labeled everything up so you can't go wrong right now then from the distributor here is the red lead this goes up to the plus side of the coil and the black lead goes up to the negative side of the coil oh, blazing sunshine and you can see that it's the 1.3 ohm that's across the windings when um, you check the coil out okay right well then the next thing we will need to do is to set the engine up to get it to run which we'll is to give it a start up and then we will then use the strobe lamp the stroboscopic light to set the timing okay so now we have got everything in place and what we have done now is we have now connected up the strobe lamp. Right? These cost less than thirty dollars, and they're all just as good as one as the other with modern electronics. Uh, anyway, you connect positive and negative to an independent power source. When you do it on your vehicle, do it with a separate battery, not with the main battery, because we don't want the um, generator fooling you, and so on. Right, okay, and then the third lead goes on, has to go around the right way, it's got a little arrow on the number one lead, and then so that when we start the engine, we then pull the trigger, and we want to see, we then pull the trigger, and we're going to see a flashing light there, and, and we want to see this mark here, sitting on or about the eight right and we're going to be doing this at low rpm about 700 rpm 800 rpm low enough not to skew the distributor and the vacuum advance for the new distributor is disconnected but the pipe is blocked up on the left hand carburetor on the case of this two litre CU engine. Okay, so now I'm going to start her up and give you a little demonstration. Okay, now with the engine at very low revs. You can see it's running at a little bit low right that's not bad little bit more
it starts to run more smoothly. That's pretty good. It's flashing all the time for me. I know it doesn't flash all the time for the camera. Right, so that is the timing set up at low RPM. And now we can lock the lock, lock screw off and all the rest of it. Go and switch the engine off now. And here we are now at just over 2,000 RPM. And as you can see, the timing light moves forward. Okay, now we can finish setting up the carbs properly.